This is Bishop Ken coming to you in that profound name, Lord Jesus Christ. What a privilege and an honor it is to come into your homes, your automobiles, wherever you may be listening by social media today to say that God is a great and wonderful and merciful God. And we bring you special greetings from the Great Refuge Temple here in the city of Jacksonville, Florida at 1317 Will Avenue. And our sister church in Lakeland, Florida, located at 1258 Martin Luther King Jr. Boulevard. What a privilege it is today, amen, to have this chance to say something about the goodness and the mercy of our Lord Jesus Christ. We thank God for our beloved pastor, the Honorable Dr. Apostle Dr. General Gruber, amen, for the wonderful work he's done as a pastor's Amen. Our churches here in Jacksonville and Lakeland, Florida. We do thank God. If you have a special need, a special request, please inbox us or email us. Amen. So that when we pray, we can pray that God will give you that desire, that miracle that you desire from him. So may the Lord bless you today. We thank you for your gifts, for your tithe, your offerings. Amen. Those who made special gifts to the Temple family, we want to say thank you for, amen, being a blessing to the work and to the ministry of our Lord Jesus Christ. We want to call at least three people, amen, during this week. Praise the Lord. It may be some that you called already, but call them again and check on them and tell them about the goodness and the saving grace of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. We do thank God today amen for an opportunity to pray because when we pray we can expect a miracle from the lord father we thank you today for how you blessed for how you kept how you've helped us even during this pandemic to come into a new year we thank you lord for we know this will be our best year in the name of jesus touch those souls who are going through difficult times and who are going through a struggle, but Lord, you are the God of all grace, all mercy. We pray you would touch and heal sick bodies and you bless, oh God, our world, our nature, and our country. You would save, you would deliver by your divine power. Bless us now, Lord, for we thank you for what you're about to do. Oh God, what you shall do in our lives. We thank you and give you praise in Jesus' wonderful name. Amen. Amen. We do thank God today. Amen. So we're going to go to our Lakeland Church where our District Elder Jeff Davis will come and read us our Holy Scripture. Then we'll be followed by a song. Praise the Lord in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. Greetings, everyone. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Our scripture this morning will be coming from St. John, the 14th chapter, beginning at the first verse. And it reads, Let not your hearts be troubled. Ye believe in God, believe also in me. In my Father's house are many mansions. If it were not so, I would have told you. I go to prepare a place for you. And if I go to prepare a place for you, 
I will come again and receive you unto myself, that where I am, there ye may be also. And wherever I go, ye know in the way ye know. Thomas said unto him, Lord, we know not whether thou goest, and how can we know the way? Jesus said unto him, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man cometh unto the Father but by me. If ye have known me, ye should have known the Father also. And from henceforth ye know him, and have seen him. Philip said unto him, Lord, show us the Father, and it suffices us. Jesus said unto him, Have I been so long a time with you, and yet have thou not known me, Philip? He that have seen me have seen the Father. And how saith thou then, Show us the Father? Believe thou not that I am in the Father, and the Father in me? The words that I speak unto you, I speak not of myself, but the Father, that dwell within me. He doeth the work. Believe me that I am in the Father, and the Father in me, or else believe me for the very work's sake. We thank God for the reading of his Holy Spirit Scripture. Smithsonian National Museum of African American History and Culture in Washington, D.C. is the nation's largest and most comprehensive cultural destination. Tyler Perry Studios is located on a 330-acre lot in the heart of Atlanta on the historic grounds of the former Confederate Fort McPherson Army Base. The major picture studio, one of the largest production facilities in the country, showcases 40 buildings on the National Register of Historic Places. This has been a moment in Black history.
bless you today. Amen. We thank God for the word of God. Amen. We thank God for the wonderful song. This time we're preparing to hear a word from the Lord. Amen. Our beloved apostle, Dr. General Gruber, is going to come speak to our hearts, speak to our minds. Amen. And we might, amen, take a hold to what God has for us. That he will make this our best year ever. Amen. After, amen, uh, after a selection, then the next voice will be that of Apostle Dr. General Gruber. God bless you today. I am troubled, but not distressed. Perplexed, but not even.
What a joy it is for us to come together once again and talk about the greatness of our God. Talk about his love, his compassion, his faithfulness to us. How he has so positioned us to live eternally with him. What a blessing it is for us to serve a God who loves us as we do. We were blessed to be informed of the goodness of God through those who found him before we did. We are standing on the shoulders of great men and women who have gone on before us. But they left us a legacy. They left us something that we can admire and look forward to and seek earnestly to follow the footsteps which they left for us. So what a blessing it is for us to be saved today, Holy Ghost filled, fire baptized, and baptized in water in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. What a blessing it is. I would like for us to continue our study, and I believe this should follow us through 2021, the, the second self, uh, as we talked about it from Colossians 1.24. When the Apostle Paul talked about how he rejoiced in suffering for Christ, I believe the Lord had given him understanding and enlightenment of the second self and that he was locked into it to the, the degree 
that he can help us to see that we are being developed, being brought to a, a greater intimacy with the Lord. Though he finished our redemption on the cross, he said to his father, I have finished the work that you gave me. Give me back the glory that I had with you before the world was. For as our redemption, it has been accomplished. Now, we are to allow the Lord to bring us to our fullness, each member of the body of Christ. So it is a wonderful thing for us to begin to look beyond where we are and see ourselves on a higher level, a higher degree of closeness with the Almighty God. So the scripture I'd like for us to use today, one of them, and I hope and pray that you would take these scriptures in a serious study and look at them. And our topic today is, of course, throughout 2021, the vision of the kingdom and seeing him better now seeing the Lord better now. For this particular study today, we want us to see ourselves steadfast, unmovable. See ourselves sustained by our relationship with the Lord and I, I move to a position of which we cannot be hid as a city that sit on a hill. We could be more effective in drawing those who are not saved, who do not know the Lord. They will end the us to the point that they would want what we have. In the book of Matthew, the 16th chapter, verses 15 through 18, I'd like for us to read these verses now. He says unto them, but whom say you that I am? And Simon Peter answered and said, Thou art the Christ, the Son of the living God. And Jesus answered and said unto him, Blessed art thou, Simon Bajona, for flesh and blood have not revealed it unto thee, but my Father which is in heaven. And I say unto thee, that thou art Peter, and upon this rock, I will build my church and the gates of hell shall not prevail against it. I'd like for us to focus upon verse 18. And I say unto thee, thou art Peter, and upon this rock I will build my church, and the gates of hell shall not prevail against it. They shall not, whatever will come, shall not be successful 
in deceiving and causing the church to fail. I believe the church is Christ himself. He is the church of whom we all seek to be in and be a part of. It is often said at times that the church is within us. And in a great sense, when Jesus is in us, the church is in us. We become sustainable. We become sustained even in the midst of trials. We are victorious because of our relationship and because of our faith because we believe and we trust and we know that God is true. Whatever he has said, it's coming to pass. May the Lord give unto us this kind of trust in him. And I do believe that the Lord will allow and cause things to come about to help us to be where we need to be to get what he wants us to have. He will help us to see and, and, and help us to, to hear and to be aware of what he shall use to develop us the more to bring us up to another level of representation. He is all about bringing us. We have said over and over from time to time we, that we are not there yet. We are being saved. We are being developed. We are being brought to another level. When Jesus paused and asked his disciples, whom do the populace say that I, the Son of Man, am? He wanted to know what the religious people and prophets say that he is. Some say you're John the Baptist. Some say that you are one of the prophets. And so the Lord said, Whom do you say that I, the Son of Man, am? He wants us to know him personally. He wants a confession coming from us as a believer. He wants to hear from us. He wants it to come out of our mouth where and how do we feel about him. And no one knows, no human Kind knows God as he wants us to know him without him revealing it to us. So when Peter began to speak, he said, Thou art the Christ, the Son of the living God. You that's who you are. 
This was given to Peter by God himself. Thou art the Christ, the Son of the living God. And Jesus said unto him, Flesh and blood did not reveal this unto you, but my heavenly Father, but my Father which is in heaven. And I say unto thee that thou art Peter, and upon this rock I will build my church, and the gates of hell shall not prevail against it. Being in the church, being a part of the church, a being in his second self, of being a part of his second self, regardless of what come against us, it will not prevail. Because we have come to know God to the extent that we trust God in, in whatever situation we may be, find ourselves, and, and, and that the Lord will bless us to rely upon the sustainability of his power, the, the keeping of his power. The gates of hell shall not prevail. We are in him, he is in us. We have his strength, his power. We are the makeup of his second self. As Paul gave us a lesson of the members of the body, each member of the body represents what it takes to be a whole body and a complete body in that each member of the body is necessary. One cannot say that you don't need the eye or the ear. If we say we don't need the ear, where is the hearing? So the second self of the Lord Jesus Christ is not a natural thing as the natural body is because it can deteriorate. But what the Lord is doing for us is giving us that undying. He is bringing us into a heavenly relationship with God that cannot be moved. We may be tried, we may be attacked, but it will not prevail against us. What a blessing it is for it to be so certain that this is God's will for his people. In the book of Colossians, the second chapter, verses 6 to 10, we find these words recorded. 
As you have therefore received Christ Jesus, the Lord, so walk in him is the instruction continuously of the Apostle Paul. How do we know how to walk in him? Unless there's a consciousness of his presence and that we are certain and listening and caring and are guided by him. We are under the lordship of Jesus Christ our Savior, his second self. As you have therefore received Christ, so walk in him, rooted and built up in him, and established in the faith, as you have been taught, abounding therein with thanksgiving. Beware, lest any man spoil you through philosophy and vain deceit after the rudiments of men, after the rudiments of the world, and not after Christ. For in him, the second self, in Jesus dwelleth all the fullness of the Godhead. Everything of the Godhead is in Jesus Christ. And you are complete in him, which is the head of all principality and power. We are complete in Jesus Christ. This is the process of which we are going through, and the Lord is blessing us to become more like himself. He, he wants us to be everything he died for us to be. This is what's going on in this hour and this season is that we are being developed. We must know that there is more for us than what we have received. Can I like to go back to Paul's expression of himself not having obtained but he presses toward the mark for the prize of the high calling of God we are moving toward God's calling upon our lives there's a call there is a calling of which cannot be obtained by anything other than God's will to take us through the process of development. The Lord causes various things to take place, such as the pandemic, so that it is, we are told not to go into our sanctuaries, churches, because of the virus, and we have in a way have been 
And I believe God is very much involved in this for his body's sake, that we can spend more time with him, that we can stay on our knees without interruptions. We can be blessed by the time we spend with the Lord. What a blessing it is for us to have this opportunity. God is doing this so that we can be everything he died for us to be. Thank him for it. You say, well, Brother Pastor, I need to go to work. I don't have the paycheck that I've been getting. Just know that the Lord will make a way. As the psalmist said that I was old and now I'm young. Well, I was young and now I'm old. I've never seen the righteous forsaken nor his seed begging bread. God is with us every step of the way. He is our provider. He is our way maker. He wants us to know that he will never forsake us. There is no temptation that is taken man, but such is common to man. But God will not let any of the things that come will override us. He will not anything cause us to fall. But he'll make a way out of the temptation for us to escape. He will demonstrate his ability to keep us from falling and give us the wisdom and the understanding to stand fast and to endure whatever is necessary at any given time. He wants us to trust him to the extent that there will not be any anxiety, any, 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 any distrust. Every good and perfect gift comes down from above where there is no variableness nor shadow of turning comes down from God himself. Everything that is worth dying for comes from him. He wants us to love him and trust him and know that he will never forsake us. The 10th verse also, as we read through Colossians 2, and ye are complete in him, which is the head of all principality and power. There's no way other than in him that we can find satisfaction we can find completeness. We can find what God has purposed for our lives to be. 
Look away from yourself. Look away from what we think is best for life. Look unto him. Look unto Jesus. Look unto the one who has all wisdom, all knowledge. The only one who can give us the kind of peace of mind in, in the midst of difficult situations. So often we see automobiles that are tested and they're trying to sell them and they put them on rocks and mountains and so on, demonstrating their ability to do this and that. Well, do you not know that Satan has... He wants to see us, uh, the Lord does, wants to see us overcome whatever he might bring. Just as the Lord did with Job, he allowed him to go through the tests and the trials of, that Satan thought would destroy and would bring him down. Job was able to say, though you slay me, yet will I trust him. What a blessing it is for us to get to know God to the extent that he can cause us to come out of our bosom this kind of trust and obedience to him. God will fix this. He, want, he will not allow this to be my spiritual demise, but he will cause it to promote me and further per perform his will in me. What a blessing it is for us to see our God in this manner. I'm looking to the one who love us dearly and promise never to leave us. But he will be with us always, even to the end of the ages. Even to the end. And the Lord said to Peter, flesh and blood did not reveal this to you, Flesh and blood, that is not this deep. Flesh and blood have not revealed it. But my Father, my Father, which is in heaven, have revealed this to you. So this means to me, for this statement, that The Lord wants us to know what you need to know from heaven will not come through man. It will not, the deep things of God will not be revealed to us by man. God will use men who have got to know God and have been taught by God to help us along our way, even as the Apostle Paul said, that I am between a I between two decisions whether to depart and be with Christ or remain here for the purpose of increasing your faith or giving you more confidence in the loving, caring God so that he can bring you up to where he wants you to be in developing his second self. 
I am grateful to God who want me to be more like him, who died that I might fulfill his purpose, and then said all these things work together for the good of them that love the Lord and are called according to his purpose. The Lord said everything that he allowed to happen is for our good. And he lets us to know that there are things that will come that you need to be told again to give thanks. Because this is my will for you at this given time. Just know this. I, I love you. And I'll never leave you. I will be there for you. I will see you through this. And whatever else may come. Just know. That you have the, the power. You, you have the strength because you are in him and he is in you. You are his second self. God is bringing us to this fullness and may the Lord bless us to lean, rely, and trust him because he cares, he loves us. May the Lord bless you to ever trust the Lord, lean upon him, love him the more. Tell him thank you and celebrate him when folks would expect you to be doing otherwise, celebrate him. because he is good and his mercy is everlasting. May God bless you, daughter, son. Just know that he is right there with you right now. Even if there's pain in your body, he said he will never leave you. With his stripes you heal. Healing is in your body. Whatever is needed, the Lord Almighty shall supply according to his riches and glory. And until next time, may God richly bless you is my prayer in Jesus' name. Amen and amen. Praise the Lord and thank you for joining us for today's virtual worship as we celebrated Black History Month. I am so excited to be a part of the amazing things that God is doing amongst his people. We will have our midweek service on this Wednesday at 7 p.m. And remember that disciples make disciples. So be sure to call at least three people this week and share your story of God's love with them and then invite them to join us in worship. Are you being blessed through this ministry and would like to sow a seed? Giving opportunities are on your screen. And don't forget to press the like button or subscribe to our YouTube channel. If you are in need of prayer, our pastors and the prayer team would love to touch and agree with you. You may call the church office at area code 904-768-4009, inbox us, type your name in the comments, or send your prayer request via email to refugechats at yahoo.com. We look forward to hearing from you. We send our prayers right now to those
who are experiencing especially tough times and our heartfelt condolences to the families who are experiencing bereavement. I have a praise report to share with you. Back in December, we received a prayer request from one of the members to pray for her mother who was in need of major surgery. And she added that it was a matter of life and death. So saints, you did what you do. You started praying and oh, how the Lord answered your prayers. On this past week, we received a praise report that said, my mom's surgery went well. The tumor was removed and the doctor said that there is no sign of cancer in her body. Praise the Lord. Thank you, Jesus. She is in the hospital and recovering well. Our family appreciates all of the saints for your prayers. God is a prayer answering God. We send our love to the pastors and to each of you. So saints, keep the praise reports coming. We love to share good news. Don't forget, we do have a Bible class today via teleconference at 1130 a.m. And until we see you on Wednesday for our midweek worship, as our pastor, the most honorable apostle, Dr. Gentle L. Gruber says, it's getting better all the time.